for NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope mission, which is sort of the uh, infrared cousin to the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, our group uh, working at Spitzer, not only do we work with uh, infrared science, we also do a lot of the uh, public outreach imagery associated with the Kepler mission, the uh, New Star X-ray mission, a few other uh, uh, NASA-based missions that don't have their own VIZ team. And um, in addition to myself, with a background in astronomy, like, like Frank, uh, but with a, a lifelong interest in photography and 3D graphics, uh, Tim Pyle is the other half of our team who's more the Hollywood animator, working on projects like Invader Zim, who's always had a lifelong interest in science, who's, we, we sort of perform the, uh, the yin and yang of our, of our group. So, when you talk about astrophys astrophysics and going Hollywood, I, I have to start off that a large part of my job is simply taking data and making it presentable and, and hopefully beautiful and evocative. And sometimes the data itself can tell a story, like uh, the bow shock in front of a runaway star passing through the interstellar medium, or the row of Eucas region with the stars, baby stars, forming <laughs> deep in the hearts of uh, dark, uh, dusty clouds. Or perhaps the Sombrero Galaxy with a, uh, an exotic ring of dust uh, circling around a, uh, a maelstrom of stars. Uh, sometimes uh, some of the imagery is uh, cinematic in its own right. The, uh, the Helix Nebula seen in the infrared, which uh, more than a few people have likened to uh, other things you've seen on the big screen. We, we did start calling it the Eye of Sauron when it appeared. Uh, the Orion Nebula, uh, another region, uh, our closest major star forming region in the galaxy. Uh, if you take the Orion Nebula and you maybe flip it around a little bit and reposition it and stretch it out, uh, it actually becomes a lovely backdrop for the dark elf starship in, uh, in a Thor Dark World. So sometimes cinematic data makes it to Hollywood. Uh, more recently, I have to point out uh, the uh, Spitzer image of the galactic center uh, looking through the dust clouds towards the very heart of our galaxy, towards the constellation of Sagittarius. Uh, I unexpectedly saw this on TV about a week and a half ago. Uh, it showed up in an oddly biological context uh, in uh, an episode of Family Guy. Uh, in fact, it was part of a montage when Stewie Griffin decides that he wants to be a child. And so, how we jump from the Baltic Center to Stewie's biology, I don't know, but you know, it, sometimes the data can be cinematic on its own. However, sometimes the data is not cinematic. Um, a lot of science results come from squiggly data plots. Uh, uh, this particular uh, image that uh, I, the bulk of you probably look at it and don't know what this means. A, a lot of astronomers have to sit and stare at it, may not determine it. But this data plot itself tells a story. It's one that we want to share cinematically as well. Uh, this actually happens to be a, uh, a light curve from an exoplanet system. A, a slight tweak in the brightness of a star that hints at the existence of two unresolved planets in the system. Now, that doesn't tell the story, but by producing an animation, it gives us context, starting with Earth, zooming out into space through uh, the local universe, the, uh, the, using the star positions that we know through uh, uh, the Hipparchus mission and, and catalogs that exist. We can give context for, here we are at Earth, and in our relatively nearby neighborhood, there is a completely nondescript star that really only becomes noticeable as you zoom into it in 3D space. And then from this point, we make a jump from data-based imagery to artistry-based imagery, where we want to get across the idea of a transiting planet and give a chance to zoom in and, and give people a sort of a feel for some of the ideas of what a planet like this might be, so close to its sun that it might even have pools of magma exposed on its surface, at least its uh, sun-facing surface. Now, at this point, we've jumped from database presentation like Donna has been presenting into a much more artistic based process, which is kind of necessary because we operate more on a newsroom schedule. We might have two or three days, if we're lucky, a week or two. We certainly don't have months to prepare these things. And so our goal in that case is not really to create an absolutely accurate rendering of what is actually there, but more to give a simplified sketch of what is a plausible scientific hypothesis. We want to set people up when they see a piece of artwork that they are one, engaged and curious, and two, have a little bit of the information we, they need to maybe help dig into and understand the story further. For instance, the kind of artwork I'm talking about is where we take bullet points of science and we, we, we create a piece that's a, a lot of fantasy and a lot of imagination, but it's driven by a series of bullet points of things that we actually know. In this case, a new star result where we were uh, uh, 
wanting to call attention to a, a bright corona that's at the base of the jet uh, outside of a black hole. Uh, we know there's an accretion disk that runs right next to the event horizon where we're trying to show a little bit of the enhanced glow on the side moving towards you and redshifted glow on the, the side moving away from you. Uh, a few elements there that are illustrating the, uh, the point that then can arm you as you go into an article and understand more. Of course, one thing that's not in that illustration is uh, the distortion of light around the black hole because we know no one ever shows something like that, especially not in Hollywood. Well, of course, unless you go see Interstellar, which now has raised the bar on our own science visualizations hopelessly by actually going in and using general relativistic simulation code that has actually produced scientific results that just came out last month in, uh, in the journals. But even this image from Interstellar, which is what you saw in the movie, was a bit of a simplification of what the actual science results are. A little more distortion, a little more of the sense of the redshift, blue shift. Uh, for cinema, as well as for science communication, sometimes we do take what we know is to be true and we adopt a simplified view because you want people to understand what you're showing, but maybe not overload them so much that they get caught up in the tails and they miss the overall point. 